everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And for today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new release DC Comics Multiverse 6 inch Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice Nightmare Batman figure from Mattel. Now, this figure comes packaged in the same style packaging we've been seeing with all the multiverse figures. Up at the very top, you've got the Batman vs. Superman logo, since this is a movie figure. Then you have the DC Comics Multiverse logo. You've got the red box with the black highlights and the figure clearly displayed in the window box packaging. Down below, you have an image of the character in the name and it tells us it comes with a Collect and Connect Grapple Blaster replica piece. On the side of the packaging, we again have an image of the character from the movie, a brief bio for the movie, and then on the back of the packaging, we have that multiverse bio, a look at the Collect and Connect Batman Grapple Blaster, and a look at all the figures that you need to get in order to complete that blaster. So figures that were already out were the Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Armored Batman. Hitting shelves now are the Aquaman figure, which we looked at yesterday, and this Nightmare Batman figure. And then yet to be released is the Lex Luthor figure and an unknown figure, which looks to be most likely another Superman uh, variant of some kind, maybe a heat blast or something along those lines. Okay, so let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. So here's a look at the figure outside of the packaging. Now, first of all, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but he comes with what looks like the bottom barrel piece for that Collect and Connect grapple gun, and it's done with just a metallic silver with some dark gray plastic. Besides that, he also comes with three little batarangs, and these are made out of a rubber type material, so they are very flexible, and they've got some line work sculpted on. They also have the word China written on each one. I guess Batman gets his arsenal from China these days. And then finally, he comes with a pair of these goggles that you see him wear in the movie, and they do have lenses. They're painted black. The rest of the goggles are kind of a gray color, and, and again, they're made with that rubber type material. So you can put it on his forehead head and and kind of have him wear it on the top of his forehead like you see him have in the movie or you can also pull it all the way down over his eyes so if you're not familiar in the trailers at least we see him wearing this outfit it's assumed that this is a uh, scene with this outfit is some kind of either vision or dream or something hence the name nightmare batman and it looks like he's on some kind of post-apocalypse world there's even some rumors that you know we see apocalypse in his or there's some reference to apocalypse and his pair of demons in this scene i haven't seen the movie yet i am going to see a screen tonight so I should know more then of course I'm not going to tell you and ruin the movie but that's what the rumors ha have stated figure has one open hand his right hand so you can kind of put those batarangs in between his thumb and his fingers and if you get it in there just right he should hold it pretty well now again because they're made with a rubber material they do have a tendency to kind of bend a little bit so the figure itself I think looks pretty good for the most part at least based on the images of, of this outfit that we've seen in the trailers and stuff I, I think it looks pretty good he's got um, looks on his face on his skin looks like he's got some uh, wash work that's to give it the appearance of dirt because again he's kind of on this post-apocalypse dusty type world he's got this scarf that's sculpted on there the coat itself the trench coat itself is a separate piece and it's a rubber type material it's actually glued onto the figure so it's not meant to be removed but if you really wanted to you could probably get it off the arms of the coat however are sculpted on the figure so it would probably look funny if you did take it off anyway. Um, he's got some bandages around his hands and then he's got these kind of big baggy pants with some belts. The, his utility belt with this outfit is silver. I assume that's what it is in the movie. I don't know why it's silver as opposed to like the yellow gold that we usually see. And then he's also got this extra belt that kind of comes down and he's got these uh, straps that go around his thigh. So overall I would say the figure looks pretty good. He's got that texture on his bat symbol on his shirt. Um, which we've seen with the other Dawn of Justice Batman figures, which I like that. Again, you've got some more wrappings on his hands and stuff. You even have a little bit of wash work. Looks like dirt on the back of the coat. And you've got some sculpting detail with the buttons and stuff on the coat as well. The comparison with that basic dawn of justice nightmare batman figure that mattel has done which we looked at last week and you can see the there's a bit more detail and, and paint applications on this multiverse version you don't have the wrappings on the gloves and you don't have the wash work on his face to give him that dirty look or on the back of the coat so basically just a little bit better paint applications and a um, little bit more detail you don't have the extra belt on, on this basic one um, between the two now i will say and we'll go over this more in a minute but 
this basic figure actually as far as like the arms has better articulation and I'll show you in a minute why. Comparison with the multiverse Nightmare Batman with the regular Batman figure and the Nightmare Batman figure is actually a little bit taller it looks like and also looks like it is different head sculpts. They didn't just reuse the same head sculpt from the regular Batman figure. You don't have the texturing on the mask on this one and obviously you don't have the uh, extra paint applications for, for the dirt. But basically the main difference is you don't have the texturing on the mask between the two figures. So this figure stands close to six and three quarter inches tall. Comparison with the multiverse armored Batman figure and these two figures are pretty close to the same height with one another. And finally here's a comparison with the other multiverse Dawn of Justice figures Aquaman, Wonder Woman, and Superman. So for articulation on this figure, the head's on a ball joint so he can look left and he can look right. He has a little bit of down movement but not a whole lot and really can't look up. Arms attached with a standard ball hinge joint at the shoulder so he can get his arm out good and he's got good rotation there at the shoulder. He has a swivel at the elbow and he has a single hinged elbow joint. However, the way they sculpted the jacket, it comes over that joint so he really can't bend his elbow very much. That is about as much as you can bend the elbow. It's a little disappointing there. It's definitely better on the basic figure as far as the elbow joint goes. You've got rotation at the wrist, but no hinges on the, on the hand, so no up or down movement there. He has an ab crunch type joint, so he can crunch down a little bit. That's about as much as he can crunch down, and then he can look back a little bit. The jacket does limit that movement somewhat, though. He's got a waist swivel. He's got those side hinge joints for the legs, so he can do the splits pretty good. He can get his leg forward about that much, and he can do his leg back about that much. He has a thigh swivel where you would expect the knee to almost be, and then the knee joint is actually where the boot cuff, where the boot meets the pants, and it's a single hinge knee, so he can bend his knee about that much. Then he's got the hinges on the feet, so he's got up and down movement with the feet, but no rotation and no ankle pivot. And then two peg holes on the bottom of his feet. So that's my view. Overall, I would say this is an okay figure. I like the look of it. I like the detail and everything of it, but I don't like the articulation on it too much, especially with the arms. That's a bit disappointing. That's probably my biggest complaint with both this figure and the Aquaman figure that we looked at yesterday is the articulation. I also think this figure is a bit too tall. I don't know why they made this figure taller than the regular Batman figure, but he definitely is, and he kind of towers over Superman, so I think the size is a bit off. So we'll have a full gallery of images up at toynewseye.com. There's a link in the description below. As always, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. Also, if you haven't already, please follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I'll have to, uh, links to those pages in the description below. And until next time, I'll catch you later.